welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, and we're back for another Sunday Sew Along. Sorry I'm not sitting in this one. I was filming Friday's video and just kind of wanted to do them all in one fell swoop here. Um, okay, so today we are tackling another Arlington hack, um, the Arlington Sweater by Love Notions. It's a turtleneck sweater pattern. We did one last week, and um, it was a neckline hack, uh, much more involved. This week, it's a pretty easy one. We are going to be doing the, or I'm going to be doing the um, cropped with the banded bottom version. Um, instead of the bishop sleeve, I'm actually doing the long puffed sleeve. I am adding the cuff, um, which you will see here in a second. And I'll talk you through how I adjusted the long puff sleeve pattern to accommodate the cuff of the bishop sleeve. And then instead of doing the gathers in the top of the puff sleeve, I'm putting in pleats to recreate this Bowden sweater. Um, this Bowden sweater doesn't come in this color anymore, but it is still available. I have it linked down below in a couple of different colors. And technically, they've got a much more intricate cuff on theirs, and it's a little bit wider, but I think that my version um, hits all the necessary points pretty, pretty well. Um, I am using a merino jersey from the fabric store, and as a reminder, we do have a coupon code for the fabric store. You can use Tomcat 10 to get 10% off any regular priced fabric. Um, they are in New Zealand, but they do have free shipping if you spend over... Uh, maybe a hundred dollars. Hmm. You'll need to go check their website. <laughs> I can't remember now. Um, but yes, you can get 10% off, which will, um, cause the Merino Jersey is pricey, but it is so heavenly to use so heavenly to wear it. And I, I've got some sizable scraps. Um, and so the four colors that I've recently bought, they have been folded in a stack together and I love them together. So I think I'm going to have pretty big pieces, like probably half a meter left of each one ish when all is said and done. So I, I probably should have just bought one and a half meters, but I bought two of each, but I'm thinking color block. I'm going to color block something when this is all, when I finished making like a main thing out of these, because I'm loving the colors together. So stay tuned on that one. <laughs> Anyway, it's a fabulous fabric and it worked really, really well for this um, Arlington. I've also omitted the um, the uh, turtleneck portion. I cut this on the cowl neck um, necklines because it's just a little bit deeper neckline, which I prefer on my body. Um, but I cut it on that and then I've added a neck band as opposed to putting the cowl um, neck onto uh, the top. So I'm showing you how to do that as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna send you to the cutting table so you can see what I am up to. As always, if you like this content and would like to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account that is like a virtual tip jar. All the money I raise from there goes right back into the channel for the maintenance on equipment, for equipment period, for supplies. A lot of it goes towards the videos that are more educational such as this. So if you would like to, I do have that link down below. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll answer those as soon as possible. And I will be back here tomorrow for a video, not on Tuesday. So this week I am going to be here on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as opposed to just Tuesday and Friday, because um, I just have a lot of Black Friday goodness to share with you, <laughs> among some other things, gift ideas, stuff like that. Things for you to enjoy if you are coming into the Thanksgiving holiday and are in the US and you just want to sit and veg out and watch YouTube videos, which is probably what I'll be doing some of. Um, just giving you some, some food for thought there. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. All right, let's take a look at um, my Arlington. Okay, so I have here the um, front and the back already cut out, and I have them um, sewn here at the shoulder seams, which you can see. Okay, I am making the uh, banded view, so I cut my bodice off at the base, because I'll be adding the band at the end, <laughs> clearly. And I also cut the neckline at the cowl um, markings because I want a little bit more open neckline. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure for our neck band. So what I'm gonna do, um, and that's why I've already gone ahead and sh sewn my shoulder seams here, and I have marked, when I cut this out, I marked a notch, and I'll put a pin here so you can easily, or more easily see, hopefully, where center front is, and then center back. So I'm only going to be measuring half of this just because it's just easier. <laughs> so I want it to get it nice and flat, and again, I just need half of it to lay flat. Um, I also have quite a big jog here for some reason. I messed that up. We'll figure, flanagle that 
when um when I'm sewing the neckband in. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So I like to use um, this rolling tape measure. Now it, you can use just a soft tape measure if you want. I just find this to be really easy. And the reason I like to measure it at this point is that your shoulder seams have already been sewn. So we know exactly what our neckline is going to be. So I'm just going to start here and I've got my little measuring tool. Um, hopefully you can see, maybe I'll come down. Uh, maybe that so you can see a little bit better. So what I'm doing is, as I'm starting at the, sorry, the glare of the light, uh, at zero, that's right here. So I'm just going to turn this. Okay, there we go. So I'm starting at zero, and I'm just going to go around my neckline, making note of when I hit 12, which is right there. Oops. All right, so that is 14. So I've made it back around to the two. So that is 14. So if we take that times two, I know that my total finished neckline is 28, okay? So now I'm gonna do some calculations. I like my uh, knit neck bands to be 85% or 15% less than my um, uh, neck opening. Hopefully you can see this okay. So my neck opening is 28 inches wide. I take that times 0.85 because that is 15% less. So we want the neck band to be 15% less than the neckline or 85% of the neckline. Just trust me if you're not math minded. <laughs> All right, so I want my neck band to be somewhere around 23.8. I just round. We'll round down to um, 23 and a half. Or actually, we could do 23 and three quarters. That might be easier because that would be 23.75. So, okay, we'll keep it right at 23.75. Okay, so 23 and three quarters is our magic number. 23 and three quarters. And I'm going to write that down just so I don't forget. I'm just going to write it on the cuff piece. <laughs> okay, so our neck band is going to be 23 and 3 quarters by 2 inches. I like 2 inches because that will give us 3 eighths of an inch on either side, which is the seam allowance of the neckline, and then um, 5 eighths up, 5 eighths back, which is an inch and a quarter. So tw 2 inches is my go-to for a neck band width. All right, so now I'm just going to take my fabric. We're going to go back up. And I have a section where I've been cutting here. I've got quite a bit of this left, which is very exciting. I want to do something um, color blocked maybe with all this merino when I'm finished making things out of the body of it. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that unfortunately, yeah, that's not going to be what we need gonna have to dig into the body of this a bit all right so I like to cut my neck bands on the fold so we can take our calculator again let me just get this all laid out nice and neat I don't know that that is even going to be enough where's my A little bit more. Oop. It's wanting to stick to itself here. Okay. Oh, right. That should be good. All right. So we get our calculator back out here. Hopefully, you can see that okay. And 23 and three quarters, so 0.75 divided by two is 11.875, which is 11 and seven eighths, okay? And I just know that that 8.875 is seven eighths because um, I've done this a long time. <laughs> All right, so that the reason we divided it by two is because I'm cutting this out on the fold. 
So we want 11 and 7 eighths. You'll also notice that I'm not taking, that's too much now. I'm not taking into account um, seam allowances on this neckband because we're wanting to stretch it anyway. So no sense in complicating things. Well, that'll be fine, I think. Okay, so what's also easy about this is that my ruler is two inches in diameter. And I realize that I'm off the, out of frame here, but I'm just lining up here. Good line. Okay. All right, I'm lining up my um, 11 and 7 eighths here at the fold. And I am just cutting up, across, and back up. And I am going to make a mark at the fold so I know where the center of my neckband is. And now instead of putting that cowl into that neckband, I will be um, folding this, you know, wrong sides together and putting this in like a regular neckband. Okay? So that's that. Very easy. And I've made note, if I ever want to do this, um, I'm going to make note that this was the cowl neckline. Cowl cut line. So I'll know that, that's, that I, I'm doing this off the cowl cut line and not the regular one. All right. So now that that is finished, fold this up in a little bit. Let's talk about the sleeve. That is our next big thing. Okay, so I have cut out the long puffed sleeve. I've not made this before. I've made the short puff sleeve for my daughter, but I've not made the long puff sleeve before. So the puff sleeved, uh, puffed sleeve gets gathered into the um, arm side. So you put gathering stitches and then gather it up. We're going to be pleating it, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a very loosey-goosey fashion. But the other thing I'm wanting to do is, um, so this sleeve gets finished off just with a one-inch hem at the bottom, but I want to put the cuff onto it. The cuff goes with the bishop sleeve, but I want to put this cuff on it because it's closer to my inspiration sweater. So what I'm going to do first, before we even cut this out, which obviously I've already done that, um, Hold on, my tripod is impinging on my view. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm first going to mark my hem so I know where the finished part of my sleeve is. So my hem is one inch and I'm just marking a line parallel to that, um, the edge of the cut line of the sleeve. So here, this pink line is my hem. Now, my cuff, Obviously, it gets sewn, not obviously, it gets sewn um, short side or long sides together, and then it gets folded over on itself to be put into the shirt. So I have measured this, and the finished cuff, excluding seam allowances, is three and a half. So there's a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance on either side, but the finished cuff is three and a half inches. Now, I would like a little bit of ease in my sleeve, um, just because it's just the nature of it with the bishop sleeve. I don't want to be too tight fitting to my arm. So I'm actually only going to take off three inches here. Um, that and there's a three eighths of an inch seam allowance here. So, you know, it's all, it'll all come out in the wash a little bit. I also want to note, I've not shortened the sleeve. Typically I shorten my, um, Love Notion sleeves by an inch, but I've not done that with this because I would like a little extra room. So play around with the length on what you want to remove, um, but we will need to remove some off the bottom to accommodate our cuff. I'm going with three inches because, number one, the seam allowance, um, but also I, I'm keeping that extra inch that my arm doesn't need in the sleeve um, just to, to make it a little bit more blue sawn, if that makes sense. So now I have extended my grain line right here. And now I'm making a mark three inches up from the finished edge, not from the cut line, but from the finished edge where my hem would be. Right here. And now I'm gonna make a line perpendicular to my grain line at that mark. So now this line up here is where I'm going to cut my shirt or my sleeve, okay? Which is what I've done. So now 
I am going to really quickly go, because I like to put my neckband in while my um, shirt is flat. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my neckband, and then I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to show you how we pin in the sleeve. All right. So I've got my neckband. Hold on. You can't see what any of this is. <laughs> okay. All right. I've got my neckband in. And I'm not sure if I'm going to um, top stitch that down with my cover stitch yet or not. But my neckband is in. Very happy with that. And then I have one of the sleeves in flat here. And clearly I have put a pleat in. My box pleat doesn't quite touch there. But you know what? I'm good with it. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Now, I'm just doing one block box pleat here at the top of the sleeve. But if you wanted to do a couple of pleats, it's up to you. I can get top heavy very quickly. So I like to do, I like a little bit, you know, a nod to the trend of the uh, statement sleeve or the statement shoulder, but I can't go too crazy because otherwise I look like a, line, a linebacker. But this is where we're heading. So when this is all done, we will have, ooh. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. When this is all done, we will have a back, a front, and then one sleeve and then a second sleeve on the other side. And then we, I would go, th I am going to go back through and do my side seams and my underarm sleeve um, in one fell swoop and then add my cuffs and then the bottom band of my shirt. Okay, so here is my armhole. We've got the back of the arm and the front of the arm and there are notches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sleeve right side together and I'm just going to pin the top of my sleeve, the top of the sleeve notch to the um, shoulder seam here. It's an intense pin for that. And then I'm going to mark my uh, notches here. We'll come back to do the pleat here in just a second. And then I'm gonna match my underarms. So from the underarms to the notches, that's pretty much one-to-one. -one. So that just kind of gets laid on top of each other when you're sewing that in. And then on this side, match my underarm seam. And then this sleeve notch. All right, so again, it'll pretty much be one-to-one -one sewing from the um, underneath the arm to that first notch. All right, now you'll see we've got a ton of excess here. So what I want to do is basically just take this excess and pinch it right up into that pen. And then I'm just going to lay it over to the outside because I'm making an inverted box pleat on the right side. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. It's okay if you've got some of the curve of the sleeve, you know, sticking out past the arm, the arm's eye. Okay, I'm gonna pinch that. And then we're gonna fiddle with it to get it even. Okay, so I am very cockeyed here, that's okay. Well, I actually can take quite a bit more up here. Okay, so now I'm just eyeing my sleeve here and you can definitely measure. So my pleat on this side is an inch and a half, and on this side, it's an inch and a half. Well, look at that, hot dog. I am going to, I have a pin in my mouth. Do not put your pins in your mouth. I do want these to, I'm gonna just futz with it just a little bit so that those inner folds meet. trying to keep that top notch right at the top of the sleeve. Okay, so now we can measure it again. Okay, 
my back is just a little bit wider, but you know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. We could mess with it a little bit more. All right. So there we go. I've literally just pushed everything to the center so that those inner folds um, meet here at the center. And then I have these two outer folds. And now I'm just going to take it to the serger or your sewing machine and um, serge that arm's eye or that armhole seam. Okay. And then after that, it's just a matter of sewing up my side seams and my underarm seam, putting on my cuffs and putting on my bands. And there you go. A very easy hack. As always, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Leave them in the comments below, and I will get to that as soon as possible. I hope you're having a great Sunday. See you next time. Bye.